hello, 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 hello. I am absolutely thrilled, as always, to host a coffee and conversation, but I'm super duper duper excited uh, for today's guest. So I'm gonna see if I can get her plugged in here. Look, maybe. There you are. <laughs> Oh, it's so good to see you. It's so good to see you too. How's your morning going? It's going good. How about you? Uh, really good. One, now that we're talking on coffee and conversation, yes. and two, now that I have coffee. So um, I have tea today. today. I'm breaking the rules. I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, no, I, you know, honestly, I normally always have tea in my hand um, for these coffee and conversations. So I break my own rules. But I don't know if you were watching my stories earlier this week, but my mom's birthday slash Christmas gift came in the mail because oh, um, yeah. I ordered it super early and it was an espresso coffee machine. And Fantastic. so I had to drink some of this delicious, <laughs> delicious coffee espresso. Yes, it's only goodness. right. So it's only right. Yes. yes. But I'm <laughs> so excited you're here for, for coffee yes. and conversation. <laughs> Um, so, I mean, I have had the privilege of getting to know you over the past like month, month and a half or so, mm -hmm. but could you introduce yourself for everyone who's watching who may not have yet met you? Yeah. So I am Courtney Price Stukes, and I have the honor and the privilege of serving as Miss Cedric County. Uh, my platform is Aging Out to Aging Forward, Adopting Better Practices to Foster the Youth. I'm just very passionate about advocacy and making sure that those who feel like they're not represented have a voice and can one day feel like they're comfortable to use that voice. That I'm just so absolutely thrilled. One, that you're Miss Cedric <laughs> County. Two, that you're here to chat with me. And three, yeah. that I get to know you. So I just want to dive right in. Um, part go. of why we're here today is to talk about your social impact initiative slash mm -hmm. National Adoption Month. So can you kind of dive in, explain um, what it is that you advocate for, what it is you're doing in the community? Mm -hmm. So as I mentioned, my platform is Aging Out to Aging Forward. So for those who don't know, those who are in the foster care system, if they're not matched or adopted before the age of 18, they age out of the system. And a lot of times those they don't have the proper resources to get involved or just feel like they have a place in society. So I want to change that right away. Not only do I want to make sure that we reduce the number of children that are entering the foster care system, but for those that have to enter, I want to make sure that they feel like they can be a member of society without that judgment and that they have the same resources as everybody else. So a way to do that is by advocating and talking with the people that are in charge. So talking with senators and people that have that power or even just the small things of mentoring someone that's in the foster care system. You never know how far a mentor can really push you in life and just how capable they can make you feel. So it can be something as small as that or something as big as, like I said, talking to those senators and making sure that you're advocating for that correct change. That's fantastic. So I have two follow-up questions directly yeah. off of that. Um, what is maybe a bill or a law that you want to talk to senators about that directly affects your advocacy work? Mm -hmm. Is there anything so, on the docket or something that you yeah, dream of? Yeah, so I know in previous years, they've been talking about whenever you age out of the foster care system, you should immediately have housing afterwards, at least for a temporary amount of time. But from what I've been researching, it looks like they took that off of like certain bills and dockets, which is quite saddening. I don't understand where the change happened and I'm still trying to, like I said, talk to the proper people. But I think that that should still be the case, at least a temporary solution to an everlasting problem, unfortunately, to make sure that they can feel comfortable and go out for a job and know that they have somewhere to go back to and lay their head at, at night. So that's one of the main things that I want to talk about. And then also just pushing out information. I feel like there is a lot of stuff that is in place, but it's not being pushed out. So a lot of people aren't educated about it, such as a lot of people don't know that if you're in the foster care system, sometimes you can go to college for free. And I was talking to someone about this the other day, and we were talking about why is that not pushed out? So I want to make sure things like that are being told to people in foster care training, like the parents, whenever they're going through training, I want to make sure that they're being aware of all this information. So there's no surprises and no missed out opportunities. Absolutely. Yeah, that, that, I mean, I'm really sad that the housing thing isn't currently being considered right. based on your research. Um, I, could you kind of catch us up to speed for, for someone who may not be familiar with 
the resources that you're talking about that creates that gap um, for foster care individuals. Could you kind of explain some of the things like housing or like um, the educational resources that you just mentioned? Could you kind of share some of those things that are increasing that gap and, and kind of um, preventing foster care students from starting at the same level as those who weren't in the foster care st system? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So like I said, the education thing is a big issue, but there are things that are in place. It's just, again, not being talked about. The housing issue is incredibly huge. A lot of these people that age out of the foster care system end up being homeless. So they're on the street with, you know, no, I don't want to say no chance. They do have a chance. They just aren't aware that they have that chance because nobody's telling them that. And there's just other small things such as foster children they get caseworkers that simply just don't communicate with them about their cases. For example, I was one of those foster children, you know, I had a caseworker who didn't communicate with me about what was going on with my case. So I felt very lost and things like that, where you're not being communicated with about things that are that extreme, that takes a mental toll on you. So a lot of people in the foster care system are dealing with mental health issues and mental health already has a stigma around it, let alone being in the foster care system with mental health. You know, so this lack of different resources and the lack of communication and making sure that we have the proper people in place that want to do the job, that's really affecting those in the system, you know, and that can cause trauma, like I said, those mental health issues and just things that they'll have to battle with for a long time in their lives. So just making sure that we have people that want to go to battle for these children is the main resource, no matter what aspect that's in. Absolutely. So it sounds like it's, it's not just helping the students, it's helping the parents, it's helping the social workers, it's helping the senators and the lawmakers come across what needs to be done. So you just recently uh, were crowned Miss Cedric County, like a week ago, right? A week ago? A week ago? Oh my gosh, time. Yeah, time. <laughs> It feels yes. it feels like a good solid week yes. under your belt, right? So this is this is your first title within the Miss America organization, mm -hmm. um, and we can talk about what that means a little bit later. But I just wanted to know, in regards to this kind of systemic um, problem that you're you're reaching into and wanting to make change in, do you have any specific goals, or what is something that um, people can help you with as you continue your your journey in advocating in this area and as Miss Sedgwick County? Yeah, that's a great question. Thank you. Um, so the main thing that I'm working on right now is talking to a lot of those organizations that are specifically based around the foster care and adoptive system. So I want to sit down with the executive directors and ask them, what is the need that you have? I think that's the busy, biggest thing to do first, rather than assuming, just based off of my experience, I want to ask them, what do you need? So once I go to those meetings and get that feedback, that's when I want to reach out to the community and be like, so based off of my conversation with people that are in those trenches, here is what we need. And I know I've already been looking on some of the websites and there's donation lists. Um, and one of the biggest things with the holidays coming up is clothes, you know, just those winter items and things that we don't think of because we have them on a daily basis. So something as simple as clothes, food, just those simple donations and volunteering are the main things that I've been seeing so far. But like I said, I want to make sure that I actually talk to those executive directors and the people in charge to make sure that I'm getting that proper information to pass that out to people in the community. I love, I love that you're starting um, with, from a place of empathy and, and not just assuming what mm -hmm. the uh, solutions could be. I think um, it's something that I teach my students when, when discussing um, a process called design thinking is we can, we can come up with all the solutions that we want. Like we can call ourselves problem solvers if we're just spitting out ideas. Right. But if we're not actually engaging with the people who are experiencing those problems and understanding the pain points and, and empathizing with them and having those conversations to say, what do you need? How can I help? Right. We're not really going to facilitate as much change. So I love, I love that you mentioned that because that's something so near and dear to my heart is, is, is finding the people who are affected and asking them what they want and what they need. So kudos to you. Proud of you. Thank you, Sierra. <laughs> I um, want to take this moment because I realized I forgot to say it at the start. I was just so excited to, to talk to you. If anyone has questions as we're going through this conversation, feel free to drop them in the comments or press the little question mark button um, and, and ask questions. It's a conversation between us and the audience as much as it is between Courtney and I. So um, feel yeah. free to ask questions. And Courtney, I'm going to also, while I'm thinking of it, tag you and pin it as a comment yeah. so people can follow you and see what you're up to throughout the next 
couple months, years, the rest of your life, yeah. not to be creepy. <laughs> <laughs> right, not to be creepy. <laughs> I love it. So it's, it's Courtney at price underscore Dukes 13. Yep. That's right. True. Okay. Yeah. Let's see. I don't know. I'm good at technology half the time. You're there better we go. than me. So like, I don't know what I'm doing, <laughs> but I'm going to figure it out. That's, that's really all it is, yeah. right? It's just us <laughs> learning and overcoming what we exactly. failed at and then learning that's mm -hmm. life right if we can apply <laughs> yep, it to technology 100%. yes so um back to the the miss america part right um you mm -hmm. competed what was that process like for you as a brand new candidate um jumping oh into God. miss america why did you choose to to do this Yes. So actually, a couple of years ago, I competed in the Miss Black and Gold Scholarship Organization at Wichita State under the Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. Um, and it's two different ballparks. Let me say that first of all. <laughs> it's two different ballparks. And at that one, I actually won Miss Gold. But I decided not to further advance to Miss Kansas just because it was insecurity. Honestly, I'm going to be 100% honest. It was very much insecurity. And that's something that was about to stop me from competing in this pageant is I just, I never saw myself as the quote unquote pageant girl, you know? Um, but with what they're doing and changing it to Miss America 2.0, where it's not as much about your looks, it's about your advocacy and your education. I just admired that because that's what I wanna do. I always made it my goal to use my story to help other people, but there was still those voices of, you're not good enough, you know? so. I talked with the director and I was asking him, I was like, do you really see this in me? You know, do you genuinely think that I would be fit out for this? And it was a little bit of that reassurance. And then also knowing it doesn't matter if I get the title, I'm still going to be able to speak about something that I'm very passionate about. And who cares if only the judges hear it, you know, I'm mm -hmm. speaking about information and passing it along to at least five other people. So I had to change my way of thinking. And you helped me with that as well. Whenever we got coffee and you were like, just don't think about it as winning, you know? And I took that with me throughout the entire process. So it ended up being really good. Um, I still was in my head a little bit. That's just natural, right? Yeah, we, but, all, we all do it. Exactly. But I just remember standing in the line with those girls at the end and just saying again, Courtney, it doesn't matter if you get a title, but if you do, you're going to make sure that you use it. You know, use it because you have this privilege and this honor that you have been chosen for this specific role. So don't take advantage of that. And I haven't. I'm already on the ball with, you know, booking appointments with those executive directors and those organizations because I want to make sure that I am being that voice for a lot of people that feel like they don't have it. Uh, I love that so much. And, and really, that mindset is so important, right? I mm -hmm. think. I'm, um, are you familiar with like the Clifton Strengths Finder yes. personality yes. test? Okay, so competition <laughs> is like my third strength. Love and it. I totally, I get it. I'm just yes. a competitive person, like mm -hmm. whether it's playing pinball at the arcade or competing right. at Miss America, like exactly. I'm, I, it's not a character flaw. It's right. just me, oh. right? <laughs> mm -hmm. right. <laughs> um, and that's a, been a really big um growth opportunity for mm -hmm. me through competing in the Miss America organization is not, uh, I think sometimes competition, we get too caught up in what other people are doing and yeah. we get really like focused, like I'm going to be better than X, yep. Y, Z, instead exactly. of saying I'm going to be better than I was five minutes ago or, mm -hmm. yesterday, I love that. or in the last oh, interview, that. you know? Uh, yeah. right. And that's been something that I've had to go through and grow through to see, no, I'm, gonna funnel this competition mindset that I just have that I love right like right. again not a character flaw if I exactly. use it properly and say mm -hmm. I'm competing against who I was yesterday to further my social impact initiative to further my impact on the community to further fundraise for scholarship opportunities not only for for candidates like myself but for candidates in the future or people who aren't eligible to compete in Miss America to further opportunities for them and when I think when candidates make that mindset shift, the whole thing changes, 100%, right? 100%. How, yep. how was it when you got crowned, right? Like, how did you feel in that moment? Oh, my goodness. I don't know who was all there or who's seen the video. I was literally in shock. Like, I, I, was, I even pointed to myself. I'm like, are you sure you're talking about me? You know? And it was, was so cute. You were like, <laughs> you were like me? And it wasn't because I didn't think I was capable of it. It's just the fact that I was on a stage with a lot of powerhouse women. You know, any one of those women would have been incredible in this role. And 
like I said, something just clicked in me where I was like, now it's go time. Now it's like go, go time, you know? And my advocacy was already before this pageant, you know? But now it gives you a bigger platform. So I'm like, I'm ready. 100% I'm ready. And it was also a beautiful moment because not a lot of people know this, but my biological father was in the audience that day too. And it was a time for him to see me, you know, just take the stage and be who I am. He's never got to see me in that light. So it was emotional. And it was also very empowering at the same time. Absolutely. Absolutely. What a, what an interesting emotional moment to go through, but how inspiring to be able to share that as you continue your journey. And, and I think about some of the other things that come along with, with competitions, right? It's yes, you get to meet all of these incredible women and you get to see the fantastic networking opportunities and how you can learn from those competitors and how they can learn from you. And it just becomes this sisterhood of in- yes. intricate and exciting and inspirational moments. I mean, there's literally one right here commenting in the group <laughs> chat or in the comment chat, Miss Jetta Smith out here, yeah. uh, gassing you up because it really is a sisterhood, right? Like that competition thing we talked about before, it's not competing against other women. It's not right. pitting us against each other. It's how can we all collectively grow to become our best selves? Um, and I think that's something that get lo- gets lost with pageantry and, and the stereotypes associated. Like everything else has negative stereotypes, right? Um, you mentioned the stigma around mental health and, and mental health in the foster care system, right? There's stereotypes there um, like pageantry. And it's not until someone like you gets to come up and advocate and share your story and share what it's really like behind the scenes in either arena or in any arena that people start to be educated and they start to see, Oh, it's not what I thought. It's not what I expected and I can learn and I can grow. And then it starts to have that ripple effect. So kudos to you again, just (laughs) proud of you for all the things that you're doing and, and for earning the job of Miss Cedric County. Along with that, you got a pretty cool scholarship, right? Yes, 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 I did. Oh, Sierra. <laughs> yes, are you referring to the Linwood Sexton Scholarship? Is that what you're referring to? Any scholarship. I mean, yes. part of it is is the um, scholarships that just in general come as being a candidate within the Miss America organization. But scholarships, I think, are something that's very important to talk about. We talked about education before. So dive right in. Tell yes. us all the academic accolades that you've, you've achieved. Yeah. Um, so like Sierra mentioned, you do get scholarships for um, competing in these pageants if you make it to a certain point in the competition, which is amazing because I am an advocate for higher education. I actually work in higher education right now as an admissions representative. So that's literally what my job is, is going to different high schools and pushing that out. But growing up, it was a different story. You know, I grew up not feeling like college would have been a real achievable goal for me just because of that financial aspect. And then when I was put into the foster care system, it was that same thing of all the doubt coming in my mind and a lot of the statistics trying to bring me down because statistically foster children do not graduate from high school or college. It's just not seen. But I didn't want to be a statistic. I'm not a statistic in many ways. So I went on those college visits with the help of those that were my guardians at the time. And I went to Wichita State University and I was like, I love this campus. This is where I want to be. Yes, go shots. <laughs> like, I could attend because we didn't have that money, right? And it was very saddening. But my admissions rep who I actually work with now, which is a beautiful full circle, she told me about this full ride scholarship. And I was like, I'm not going to get it. <laughs> I'm just not going to get it. And she was like, no, Courtney, I really see this in you. And I think that you should go ahead and apply for this. So I was like, you know what? Why not? The worst thing that could happen is I don't get it, you know? So I applied. And I remember specifically, I was at a speech and debate tournament. And I had got a call from one of the reps at the time. And I went into the janitor's closet because there was a lot of noise going on. And I answered the phone. And she was like, Courtney, you got the scholarship. And I just went blank. I was like, what? (laughs) You know, I was like, this is not real. And then I just started screaming in this janitor closet because it was just something that I never pictured for myself. Like not alone just going to college, but my college education being paid for. And that's what's so good about this organization is it's making that a reality for so many women. And I just want to continue to advocate that for those little girls who 
you know, see women like me or women on that stage and they see themselves in us, that it's a possibility. You know, you're not a statistic. You're not the odds that were stacked against you. You're so much more than that. And you have the opportunity to live out your dream. So I thank the organization for this. I think that rep that saw it in me that I now get the chance to work with. So it's a beautiful, beautiful thing to have those people that want you to further your education because they know that you're going to do great things in the world. It really is inspiring to have those those mentors that you you even talked about being a mentor um, in your life that mm -hmm. recognize something in you and then being able to in turn find a role like an admissions rep or right. as a local title holder to feed back and empower the next generation to come up with you and say, look, I didn't think I could do it, but I'm here today. Mm -hmm. If you don't think you can do it, you could be here tomorrow. Right. Um, so I love that. I love that you recognize those people in your life um, that have helped you get to where you are. It's so important to, to recognize those. I know um, there's a, another local candidate who's whole social impact impact initiative is all about mentoring and, and just mm -hmm. bringing people up with you Susanna Bowden she's has her own podcast called mentoring the next mm -hmm. and I think that's really what the Miss America organization is about right being able to empower others yes. and help them see um, their own potential right like all of us in some way are empowered through an organization like this but it's really not the organization it's mm -hmm. the people that we meet exactly. right it's the opportunity to grow and develop and have conversations and further yourself, grow into your best self through professional, personal development, setting up uh, meetings with executives and, <laughs> and, and senators, right? Let maybe without thinking that you could do it, you are in a role now where it's your job to do those right. kinds of things and you become empowered to say, I can affect change. I can sit at a boardroom and lead meetings yes. that are really important. <laughs> Um, so I'm just really excited for, to watch you grow in this role. I realize we are in week one, but there's so much more ahead of you that I can see that I'm like mind blown and so, so excited and ecstatic to, to watch you do. So what is something that you want people to know about you? It does not have to be serious. It can be funny or it can be serious. It just, what is something that you need the audience to know today? Can it be a funny and a serious? <laughs> Absolutely. My funny fact is that I'm a bit of like a sprite aholic. <laughs> I'm always seeing like, like the a soda. Sprite. Yes, I have a problem, yeah. Sierra. Like I really, I was like, they need to like make me an ambassador as much sprite as I drink. So yeah, <laughs> it's like everybody like Courtney. You have a bit of an issue, but I'm working on it. <laughs> you know, I okay. am. And then I would have more... very much laughed if your drink was Sprite this morning. You see, I was very intentional. I was very <laughs> intentional to not make it a Sprite. It's in my fridge. Very intentional, Sierra. For <laughs> but po I, post coffee and conversation. You know, <laughs> my more serious thing that I want people to know about me is that I'm just a safe space. You know, that's the number one thing that I want people to not only feel for me, but to see as well. So I want to make sure that I'm very open about that you know um there's just a lot of things that i've been through in life but i never want to make that my identity you know um i want to use all those trials and tribulations and not use that to make me hesitate in life but use that to allow me to help others in life so that's the number one thing that i want people to know about me is i'm weird you know i'm weird but i'm i'm here for people you know i'm very quirky i'm a you know, a thespian, I'm very out there. But when it comes down to business, I'm ready. You know, like I'm ready to be an advocate for those people that need a person to stand up for them and to speak for them. And not only will I be that person, but I'm going to help you become that person for the next person that needs it. So that's the number one thing I want people to know. My heart, my <laughs> heart just exploded. So you mentioned being a thespian. Yes. And your talent I found to be absolutely phenomenal. Yo. Like I, I can't even think of the words to describe it that would do it justice. Yeah. Um, it's, can, can you just explain, because I'm not going to be able to do it justice. Can you explain <laughs> to the audience what your talent is and, yes. and why I love it so much? <laughs> I love it. Um, so what I did is I did a bit of a vocal and a speech performance. So a huge thing that I'm passionate about is 
theater and also just public speaking in general. So I wanted to combine those two. So I sang a little bit from The Hard Knock Life, which is from the movie Annie, which circles around the adoptive and foster care system. So I wanted to make sure that I incorporate that in my talent. And then I started speaking about the foster care system and a little bit about my story, because like I said, I always want to use my story in some kind of way, incorporate that. So I took this kind of lighthearted, you know, theatrical movie, but then I made sure that I was talking about a serious moment within it so that it would be able to be reached by kids that were five all the way up to people that were older. Um, and it was just something that I loved to do, you know, like, I know I'm not, you know, the best at every single talent, but I wanted to make sure that I was being myself 100%. So I was like, this isn't, you know, maybe the stereotypical talent that a lot of people do. They don't usually see this mashup, maybe. But I was like, this is what I do, you know? So I think that's what really showed through the performances. She's being herself 100%. Exactly. That That's why I brought it up after you said that kind of, I'm quirky, but I'm ready to go to work mm -hmm. description of yourself because it showed up in your talent. It showed up when you were on stage. It sh you could see your genuine, authentic self throughout the whole competition. And I think that's something very uh, unique about you is that you have just this genuine, authentic um, aura, personality, <laughs> like vibe <laughs> that, that you put out that it just is like a good, uh, good vibe for, for everyone to interact with. And I, I think that that's something I'm really excited for others to see in you too and see I can be myself because yes. she was herself, yep. um, which is really what what everything's all about right like how do i be my best self so yes. thank you for bringing your authentic self and thank you for helping others see that they can be the, their authentic selves too because it it's hard when you're in a, a public arena or yeah. you're on stage or you're engaging with people differently than you or older than you or different belief sets than you right to feel like you're comfortable being your authentic self um, so thank you for just seeing that as an obstacle and then just like crushing it so that the rest of us can do that too. And that's the goal. I want everyone to feel like they can be themselves. Nobody can be you better than you can be you. You know, if you're trying to copy someone else, you're just trying to be them and you're not going to beat them at being themselves, you know? So be you 100% of the time because that's what's going to show through through a lot of people. If you're not being authentic, you can tell. You know, and nobody wants to be represented by someone who's not authentic in themselves. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, that just makes my heart so happy. I'm going <laughs> to ask you later on what a tip would be for people, but I feel like that's it. That was the pearl of wisdom. Yes. Uh, take that um, unless you got something else. <laughs> what? I mean, I can always come with some tips here. <laughs> I can always come with some tips. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say speed round, um, but... <laughs> Let's let's talk a little bit about um, the uh, environment that you found yourself in when it came to being a new person competing mm -hmm. in yes. this. Was it what were the those feelings like, and um, what what was it like? Did, were you nervous? Were you scared? Were you excited? What yes. what was that journey? Oh, oh my goodness! Um, so for those of you that don't know, it was I believe it was ten women and then there was only two of us who had not competed in Miss Kansas before one of them being myself so that was very scary for me um, because like I said I already get in my head about things in general but I've started comparing myself you know oh well she's already been there so she's gonna be better than me but then I had to keep reminding myself Courtney it's not about the title it's not about the title and then also this piece of wisdom that someone told me they're like somebody came up to me once and they said that I'm intimidating and I looked them in their eye and I said I'm not intimidating you're intimidated and I had to tell myself, Courtney, these women are not intimidating. You're just allowing yourself to be intimidated. Yes, they're powerful women, but you're a powerful woman as well. You have every right to be in the same space as them. So I had to tell myself that. And then I had to say, Courtney, these girls are not against you. Like, they want to talk to you. So I'm a bit introverted. I know I don't seem like it, but I am. So it takes a little bit of extra effort for me to, you know, spark a conversation. But I made that a goal to just get to know the girls and actually sit and talk to them and laugh with them. And that helped ease a lot of those nerves that I had and just realize they're not here to sabotage you. <laughs> like, you know, they're here because they have something they're passionate about as well. And they want the opportunity to share that. Um, so I really had to allow myself to say, they're not intimidating. You're just allowing yourself to be intimidated. Absolutely. I, 
I think that was something that we all get in our heads. It goes back to that kind of stereotype conversation we were having that even those of us who compete, we still have some of those biases that we're like, oh, they are here to sabotage us or I'm not good enough. I can't stack up. Like mm-hmm. there's a whole like conversation of things that can yeah. happen up here um, that just aren't, aren't true. And we do, it's not something that we can switch off like a light and say, right. oh, no, I wait. thanks. <laughs> right. Um, it, it'd be really nice, but it's just not something that we can do. It's something that we have to grow through. And, and I think that mindset of, I'm not intimidating. Uh, you're being intimidated. Like yeah. you're allowing yourself to be intimidated. Yeah. Um, and then shifting it. That was a, that's a big emotional growth step to be able yeah. to shift that, to recognize it in, in how you were feeling about the other women. That, that takes a level of emotional maturity that <laughs> most humans, I would say, probably don't have. Um, so thank you for bringing that to the conversation because it's not something that I've ever been able to apply words to, but that's right. beautiful. There you um, go. <laughs> thank you. Thank yeah. you. I, see, that's why I love doing these coffee and conversations because it's another chance not only to grow the sisterhood that, that we have within the Miss America organization, but also to learn from other humans who are doing cool stuff and to see their mindset and to hear experiences that they go through and to, to you know, just get to know them on a better level and see how um, their pearls of wisdom can be asp- uh, applied to your own life. So thank you for for just being present and allowing me to ask you all sorts of questions I love and it. to be, <laughs> yeah, I, I appreciate the, the authenticity and the transparency and the willingness to share. Cause that's sometimes just as hard as asking the questions, right. Is being willing to answer the yeah. questions. So is there anything before we kind of wrap up any kind of thoughts that you, you didn't get to say, or I didn't ask because I didn't think of it um, <laughs> that you're like, Oh, I wanted to say this today too. Um, I mean, I think the main thing that I just want to say is a very general statement. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, but I just want to say thank you to everyone who helped me along this journey. Sierra, you're a huge person that helped me along this journey. And just thank you to those who will continue to help me along this journey. You know, it's not just an easy thing to wear. Oh, you have a crown now, you know, just go out. It does take work, you know, and I want to thank those people in advance for just helping me through this and like I said it doesn't matter at the end of the day if I get a crown you know that's not what this is about ultimately um so just thank you and I hope that I can be someone who impacts the community in a positive way and even past my Miss Central County year I want to continue to do that work so thank you for seeing in me someone that can be a voice for those who don't have it <laughs> I love I love getting to know you how can other people who have <laughs> how can other people who have loved getting to know you through this conversation um one get connected to resources um maybe they're in the foster care system and they're intrigued by what you've said or they want to support and and donate or um get involved with advocacy and awareness where can they go um yes. that's the first part of the question i'll let you answer it <laughs> oh, yeah. um, so the main thing is just finding organizations within the community that you're in and that's as quick as like just some research. So finding those organizations and the same question that I'm going to ask them, what is the need that you have and allow them to tell you and then find what you can do that's in that list and just do it. Like I said, it's as small as just being a mentor or volunteering or something as big as becoming a foster care parent. Um, But that's really up to you. And then also throughout my social medias, I'll be posting different links and different lists of donations. So you can go ahead and take a look at that. I believe, yes, Sierra pin my um at in the comments right there so you can go ahead and take a look at that but it's just really asking yourself what am I willing to do and then just seeking that out so what can we do for you how can we help you as you continue your journey what are some things um following your social media on instagram at price underscore dukes 13 or on facebook at it's Courtney Price Dukes, and then Miss Sedgwick County. So you can follow that too. Or you can just follow my personal page, which is just Courtney Price Dukes. And the main thing that you can do to help me is just if you have something within the community or you need someone that needs to be talked to or anything like that, just contact me. You know, like I'm always willing to just go sit and have coffee, even if you just want to have a conversation about my experience and just you know, something as simple as, oh, I just need somebody to talk to, you know, it doesn't even need to be related to the foster care system. Like I said, I also advocate for like mental health and stuff. And 
just making sure that everyone feels like they're heard and has a safe space. So just making sure that you feel comfortable enough to reach out is my main thing because I do want to help. Fantastic. Well, I think that is a stellar way to end our coffee slash tea yes. and conversation. Thank you so, so much for sharing your heart and your experience and your advocacy um, with us on this episode. And I so look forward to watching you continue to grow. So thank you. I appreciate thank you. you. Yes. I love you, Sierra. <laughs> I love you too. Have a wonderful Sunday. You too. Bye. Bye.